You are at 7,000 and I'm at 70. He looks up at me, he says, Rabbi, I got quantity, but you got quality. We seem to be in the news almost every day. We seem to always be grabbing the headlines. There must be so many Jewish people in the world that has such an effect on the world. Well, we know the world is over 8 billion people. So how many of those 8 billion people are Jewish? Right now, in the world, it's about 15 million Jewish people. 46% are in Israel and 48% are in America and the rest are spread throughout the rest of the world. Well, taking into account that there are about 15 million Jewish people in the world, 15 million may sound a lot, but when you compare it to 8 billion people, you know, how, you know what percentage the Jewish people are? 0.2% of the whole population are the Jewish people. That's it. Yet, the Jewish people seem to be so notable that they seem to make it into the headlines all the time. And you wonder, such a small numbers of just 0 0.2% of the, of the population, yet why do we make so much noise? Why are we so noticeable? Why does it sound like that every other person is Jewish out there? And, and it's quite a phenomenon when people realize that we are so tiny. So why is that? Prior to the Holocaust, there were actually 18 million Jewish people. Right now we are at 15 million, so we still haven't recovered from the loss during the Holocaust. And true, we are fighting a different type of a Holocaust nowadays. It's a Holocaust of assimilation, where people are intermarrying and losing their connection to the heritage and we have lost more than we have lost during the Holocaust since the Holocaust to assimilation. In the Jewish world to maintain the Judaism there needs to be a continuous chain of custody. There needs to be a continuous link, a genetic, a DNA, a spiritual link and that goes through the mother. When the mother of a Jewish person is Jewish, then you are born Jewish. Now, if you want to become Jewish, you can, and that is going through a conversion process. So when we look back, the very first Jewess was our mother, Sarah. And then came Rivka, Rebecca, and then came Rachel, and then came Leo. And when we look back in our history and we see that that is our direct link. It is a spiritual link. It's a genetic link. It's a link that bonds us to our heritage. So one may ask the question, 0 to point percent, that is tiny of the whole world population. Why is that? Well, it's nothing new. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, God declared in the book of Deuteronomy, in the Torah, in the Bible, that as a Jewish nation, you are going to be the smallest of all. By design, we will always be the smallest nation compared to the rest of the world. But being the smallest does not mean that we have a lesser responsibility. As a matter of fact, God gave the Jewish people a tall order. God gave the Jewish people a mission by saying those words that you should be a light unto the nations. Your job as a Jewish people, although you are just less than 2% of the population, your job and responsibility is going to be to be able to teach the rest of the world how to develop a relationship with God and how to coexist 
and how to live peacefully and how to make our journey in life a meaningful journey. And that is what Judaism is all about. That is what the Torah, the word Torah, the Bible, actually means in Hebrew. Torah is from the word lesson. It's an operator's manual to the body, to life. It teaches us how to live our life. And it's an amazing lesson to be able to learn that even though the Jewish people are so few in number, but look at the impact the Jewish people have had on the world. Look what the Jewish people have been through in history. Historically, the pogroms, the persecutions, the genocides, the displacements, and most recently the Holocaust, and even more recently the massacre on October 7. No other nation has endured such difficult times as the Jewish people. And yet, nonetheless, we always seem to land on our feet. We always seem to keep our mission, which is to be a light unto the nations. When we look statistically of how many Nobel Prize winners are Jewish compared to the rest of the world, when we look statistically the country, our homeland of Israel, the amount of innovations, the amount of advancements, in all areas of life. No other country can compare by size to its accomplishments. Although in Israel is such a tiny country, smaller than the state of New Jersey, but from that country, it has been such a contributor to society. Almost all of the technology that we are enjoying today began in Israel, was established, was created in Israel. So much of our day-to-day -day enjoyments was created in Israel. And you wonder, such a small country with such a small population compared to the other countries, yet the ability to contribute to the world is parallel to none. Why is that? The answer is quite simple. It is because God Almighty at Mount Sinai, when He gave the Ten Commandments through the Revelation, and He revealed Himself to the Jewish people, and He gave them a responsibility. He gave them a mission that you don't just live in this world to see what does the world have for me, but your mission is what can you do for the world? What can you do for humanity? What can you do to help humanity grow, prosper, live peacefully? And God gave the Jewish people a mission that when you are to be a light unto the nations, means that you need to be a living example unto the nations. Yes, you're going to go through difficult times. You're going to go through difficult, difficult times, wars, displacements. But yet you'll always stay focused. And that is something in the Jewish nation that we have always been able to stay focused. No matter what we have been through, we have not lost our faith in God, we have not forgotten our mission, and we get back on our feet, and we begin running again. And this has been our journey for 3,300 years. In the times of the desert, between Egypt and Israel, when the Jews wandered for 40 years in the desert, they went through 42 stops. They would travel and they would stop. Sometimes for a short period, sometimes for a long period. But they went through 42 times. And every time they had to dismantle the temple and then rebuild it again. 42 times. And this has taught us that even though we may have gone through difficult times, we have been dismantled. No matter where our next stop is, we rebuild again. And we rebuild in a way that God's glory can come and rest there. So, although the Jewish people may not be great in numbers, we are God's ambassadors for you, for the rest of the world, to be an extension of God,
And you too can be God's ambassador. It's, you don't just have to leave it up to the Jewish people to do, but you can be God's ambassador as well. I'll never forget a story in 1986. When I just began my career, I was driving down the freeway here when I saw a car that had a bumper sticker on it with Hebrew words on it and said, we want the Messiah now. And I was so eager to find new Jewish people in this suburbia town north of San Diego. And I began stalking the car and I began honking the horn to get the attention of the driver. And the driver was getting actually scared of me and he wouldn't make eye contact. And when he got off the exit, I followed him off the exit. And when we got on off the exit, he drove into a parking lot and I followed him into the parking lot and I got into the parking lot and I saw that every single car in that parking lot had a bumper sticker in Hebrew. It said, we want the Messiah now. And this was 1986 pre-cell phone days. I did not have a camera with me. I wish I could have taken a picture of it. I got out of my car and I began to laugh. And I said, what are the chances? 40 miles north of San Diego, some suburbia, there'd be a whole parking lot with bumper stickers in Hebrew. So I said, what hell, what's this all about? And the pastor, Pastor Ray, came over to introduce himself to me. He says, hi, I'm Pastor Ray. We just had a trip to Israel. We are Christian evangelicals and we support Israel and the Jewish people. And uh, we just got back and in the airport, we saw these bumper stickers. So we all purchased it. We shook hands, we exchanged phone numbers and we began a friendship that lasted close to 40 years. Um, he eventually moved his church to a neighboring town near me, about three, four miles away from me. He has 7,000 members in his congregation. I average around 70 members in my congregation. We would have coffee about every month. And I remember distinctly one time I was talking with him. I says, Ray, you got 7,000 members. You remember in 86, we both started from our own garages. We both started with a few members. Look, you are at 7,000 and I'm at 70. He looks up at me, he says, Rabbi, I got quantity, but you got quality. And I thought about that, realizing, yes, the Jewish people, we don't have quantity. We don't have the numbers. We're not into the billions. We're barely 15 million, 15 and a half million now. But what we do have is a quality relationship with God. We believe in one God. We believe in the Torah. We live by the Torah. Our life is about the living. We do anything we can to save a person's life, whether Jewish or not. Our whole existence is about what can we do for others? How can we be benevolent? How can we be charitable? How can we do whatever we can to help a fellow human being? That's what Judaism is about. So yes, we may not be great in quantity, but our quality stands tall and will always stand tall. And we will do everything we can to continue our mission until we reach the perfection, which is the revelation of the Messiah speedily in our days. Amen. May God bless our brothers and sisters in Israel. May God bring home the hostages. God bless you. God loves you.